Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Now, today for you, you normally expect Wakefield videos on a Sunday. Well, I've got something different for you today. I'm in the Derbyshire borough of Erewash to begin a brand new district. It's supposed to be Wakefield on a Sunday, but the fates have conspired against me this week and I haven't got any Wakefield videos ready for you. Um, and we're down here in Derby for the weekend for an event. So, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, and I'm here to knock off a couple of villages. Let's get started with Little Eton. Little Eton lies to the extreme west of the Derbyshire borough of Erewash on the border with Amber Valley. The population, as taken at the 2011 census, was 2,430. The name originates from Anglo-Saxon times and means the little town by the water. It's situated on the former route of the old A61, which is now the B6179, just north of the Derby section of the A38. Now there's a lot to talk about in this one and I was helped in no small part by this amazing information board on the corner of the town, right in the centre of the village. So Little Eaton has something called the Millennium Trail and here at this board it shows you the route of it. And as you can see there's two routes, there's the route of the Millennium Trail which is the uh, solid green line and an optional half route which is the dotted green line. Now I'm going to zoom in as, uh, as much as I can to the board to show you where the route goes. Now effectively I'm going to be following a little bit of this on my walk around the village but I'm not going up here to this uh, area here. So uh, this is the main sort of body of, e of Little Eaton just here and that's the area where I'll genera generally be walking. So this optional half route bit I'll be coming down there. Now I'm currently there and I'm going to go this way up to where this number 22 is across the brook and then up here before coming down to there and if there's anything that that route misses of course I'll use the car and put the GoPro on the dashboard let's go so what's Little Eaton like well it's full of interesting things Little Eaton is surrounded by moors and woodland which offer attractive views over the Derwent Vale inspiring at least one local artist James Preston to recapture it in oils and watercolour. Another local hero was T.P.C. Wilson, a somewhat forgotten war poet and writer who died in the trenches in 1918. Many of the village's historic buildings are built of stone which came from local quarries in the 1800s. The wealth of grit stones, minerals and coal in the area and further north in Denby, Horsley and Smalley put Little Eton on the map. These days, if you wanted to buy a house in the village, you'd be looking at an average house price of £326,000. Demographically, Little Eton is made up of 98.2% white British citizens, and generally, over the last 10 years, there's been little change to the population makeup. The parish covers an area totaling 4.918 kilometres squared, which gives it a population density of 514.9 per kilometre squared. It borders the parishes of Bredsell and Morley in Erewash, as well as Duffield, Horsley and Holbrook in Amber Valley. Pack horses used to transport goods from here to Derby. That was until 1793 when the Derby Canal was extended to Little Eaton. It continued to operate until 1908 but is now largely filled in. In late June, early July, like many villages in Derbyshire, there's a village carnival here in Little Eaton, which follows a week of events that lead up to it. 
The carnival always concludes with a fancy dress parade from the top of the village, and a small fair sets up along with stalls, refreshments and a barbecue which serves meat from the local butchers. So this road I'm on here is Barley Close and it stretches for a long way, heck of a long way, from the town all the way up to the top almost of Little Eaton. It's full of houses just like the ones you can see in shot now. It's uh, interesting to say the least. I didn't expect Little Eaton to be this residential. A well-known and popular character from Little Eaton was Alice Grace, better known as the Little Eaton Hermit, born in 1867 who, on being evicted from her cottage, lived in sheds, barns and disused buildings until finally residing in her famous box home. And that box used to hold bacon. It was donated by the local butcher. It was located in the nearby Cox Bench Wood. After spending 20 years as a hermit, Alice was forcibly taken to the Union Workhouse at Shardlow in 1907 and would die aged 60 in 1927. Her story is told in a song, Alice in the Bacon Box, by Derbyshire singer-songwriter Lucy Ward. Little Eaton has a great history for independent brewers. The Queen's Head pub, one of three in the village, was restored by the Derby Brewing Company, which joined forces with Everard in 2011 in a £400,000 project. The Queen's Head was originally named the Delvers Inn after the Delvers who worked in the local quarries. It later picked up a royal connection, first of all being called the King's Head, before then changing to the Queen's Head following Queen Elizabeth's coronation. In late 2011, the telephone box on Alfreton Road, close to the village centre, was bought for £1 by Little Eaton Parish Council and converted into a book exchange after a suggestion by the Village Book Club. Another telephone box, further along the road, opposite Duffield Road, was converted to an art box with regularly changing displays. So let's have a little look inside the art box, shall we? So I'd imagine a lot of these will be pictures from Little Eaton and the surrounding areas. How many of these places have you all seen before? That's quite cool. That's really good. If you're going to use the red phone boxes for something, make sure it's something the community can be proud of. I think Little Eaton have done well here. Well done, guys. So now that you've got a feel for the place, what's Little Eaton like in terms of amenities? Let's find out. Bus services from Little Eaton run to Derby. These are the 71 and the 72, and there's also an Amber Line service which runs between Derby and Hucknall. In terms of shops, there's a co-op on Alfreton Road next to the local primary school, situated next to the newsagent. On the opposite side of the road is the well-known Barry Fitch Butchers, established in 1969. Much of the meat here is reared in the fields around Little Eaton. On the southern exit to the village is the Derby Garden Centre. Off Barley Close is something called the Little Eaton OAP Hall. As far as I can tell, this is like a village hall for pensioners and the retired. It's also the location for meetings of the Little Eaton Local History Society. Little Eaton has a surgery located at number 10, the town called the Apple Tree Medical Practice, which also has a surgery in Duffield. There's a pharmacy here as well. There are three pubs in Little Eaton, although there used to be four, the Anchor having now closed. Here's the new inn on the corner of Duffield Road and New Inn Lane. And then there's the aforementioned Queen's Head, which reopened in 2011, located on Alfreton Road. The third pub is featured in today's picture bit, the Bell and Harp, to the north of the village, which was originally known as the Bell Harp. At the southern exit to the village from the A38, there used to be a little chef which closed in early 2012 and reopened as a Starbucks in 2013. Little Eaton's church is dedicated to St Paul. Construction of the church started in 1791 and it was consecrated on the 9th of July 1791 by the Bishop of Lichfield, James Cornwallis. 
was enlarged in 1837 when the capacity was doubled to accommodate 300 people, and again in 1851 when the chancel and tower were added by Henry Isaac Stevens, before it was restored in 1869 by Giles and Brookhouse when a north aisle was added, the nave roof was raised, and the church completely re-roofed. The church is in a joint ecclesiastical parish with St Altman's Church in Duffield, being formerly within Duffield Frith. An organ chamber was constructed in 1880 and a pipe organ by Alfred Kirkland was installed in 1905. A specification of the organ can be found on the National Pipe Organ Register. Two notable monuments in this one are for John Tempest and William Tempest. Thomas Tempest, a relation, developed Peckwash paper mill which we'll see today in the picture bit. In the west of the village is a huge park, St Peter's Park, which has quite a lot within it. Prominent in the park is the new Little Eaton Village Hall, opened in 2010 and heavily used by a wide range of clubs and groups from people in the village. One of the users of the hall is the local football team, Little Eaton FC. When St Peter's Park was first created, it was little more than a four-acre fenced area of flat grass. Today, one corner of the park contains a children's play area with swings, slides, tunnels and monkey bars and the rest of the park is given over to a football pitch, cricket pitch and tennis courts. The park is also used as the village primary school's playing field, the school lacking a field of its own. On the 26th of March 1903, Thomas Bates, a prominent figure in Little Eaton, died. Bates was born in a house on Duffield Road and was educated at the local national school, which then became the original village hall. In his will, he donated £1,000 to the village for the draining, levelling, fencing and laying out of the park, having donated the land for a park during his lifetime. He also left money to employ a caretaker of the park, and according to the will, the park was to be named St Peter's Park, a fact which puzzled those who knew him, because he loved St Paul's Church. There was, however, a reason behind his request. He was born on St Peter's Day, 29th of June. I think it's fair to say this place has got pretty much everything. It's amazing. I, uh, I knew this place had a fairly sizable population before I came here. And of course, when you have a place that has quite a large population, you expect there to be plenty of amenities. But this one really does have it all. Okay, let's see what else we can find in this place that's of interest. I already know one thing, and that is a brook. Let's have a look at that. There's a reason why Little Eaton means town by the water. Running through the village is Bottle Brook, which flows from the hills above the village and into the River Derwent. It's a gentle stream which runs alongside Alfreton Road for the most part. It has a total length of almost four kilometres, although that figure includes the several tributaries which are up in the hills. As it approaches the Derwent, it flows underneath a steel bridge off Duffield Road before flowing under Duffield Road itself, and this leads us to our second major historical feature. Now, having uh, done this for nearly a year, my eye is certainly a lot better than it used to be for catching things. And when I first got here and I'm walking along the town, I noticed a footpath along the side of the brook. And I thought to myself, that's an old railway line. I've never been here before. I had no idea if it was. And it turns out it is because I'm stood on an old railway bridge. And to prove that this is an old railway bridge, here is a sign that says this is a bridge, or used to be a bridge, over a railway. Now I can't read what it says because it's very, very weather-worn, but it certainly is a railway bridge. I can tell by the markings. And there is the path, which used to be an old railway line. And let's see what railway line that was. That bit's coming up right now. Little Eaton has two forms of railway history. It was served by the Little Eaton Railway Station on the Midland Railway Ripley Branch. That's the pink building on the right here. There used to be a level crossing here as well. Immediately before the level crossing was the Derby Canal Wharf, where something called the Little Eaton Gangway also terminated. Little Eaton Gangway, also known as the Derby Canal Railway, was a horse-drawn single-track railway. It ran from the terminus of the Derby Canal northwards to Smithy Houses, a distance of four miles, and then continued for a further mile to Denby Hall Colliery. A gang was a set of six to eight wagons drawn by four horses. The bodies of the wagons were then taken off their bogies and loaded onto barges at the canal wharf, which were towed by horses down to Derby. 
This three foot six gauge horse operated lie was authorized by the Derby Canal Act of 1793 and its construction was largely the work of Benjamin Outram. It was opened in 1795 and it closed in 1908. The village pound now, or pinfall, stood at the junction of Old Alfreton Road and Windy Lane. As you can see, the walls are still standing and it's in a good condition and it's now used as a garden. Here's one for you little Eton locals. What was this building at the end of Barley Close? I found numerous pictures of it online, but none tell me what it is or was. There's a polished granite pillar by the entrance to St. Peter's Park. The north facing side of the pillar bears an engraving celebrating the coronation of King Edward VII with the legend, Fear God, Honor the King, written underneath. Opposite the park is this rather gorgeous old building. This is the Church Hall. Other buildings of note include this carefully renovated Grade 2 listed malt house on Duffield Road which was built in 1780 and is the former home of the Little Eaton Brewery Company. Little Eaton is also the home of the contractors G.F. Tomlinson founded in 1892. They are a leading, well-respected construction firm with an excellent reputation for successful delivery, according to their website. They occupy the enormous Tomlinson House opposite New Inn Lane. The village also has a resident blacksmith. Little Eaton Smithy is situated in the original 18th century village smithy. The traditional techniques of forge work, including riveting, banding and forge welding, continue to be practiced here. And finally, National Cycle Route 54 passes through Little Eaton, seen here outside the Starbucks at the edge of the village. Okay, that's just about it for the parish of Little Eaton. One thing I haven't done yet is put one of these on the parish notice board. If you are new here, if you're watching me for the first time, this is how I mark off that I've been to a civil parish. I put a card on your notice board and right here in Little Eaton, it's getting one right there in the corner. There we go. Okay. Time to give you guys a picture bit. Here it comes now. And there you go, I'm back where I began this video here in Little Eton and that's the first of the 14 parishes of the borough of Erewash in Derbyshire down and there will be some more coming your way very soon. Uh, there's another one in fact that will be coming next week in place of Wakefield because as I said at the top I don't have any Wakefield videos at the moment uh, so yes I do need to get on and uh, film some more of those but for now this has been the parish of Little Eton and I've been Andy also known as the Village Idiot and I'm out.